especially pharmacy is really relied on by, by manufacturers, physicians, patients, and, and even payers to have patients start therapy very quickly. Uh, patients receive a high number of touches throughout the process. Um, Cheryl, can you walk us through a typical patient experience with a specialty pharmacy? Sure. Well, the patient's journey actually begins with diagnosis. So um, uh, many of the patients that we deal with, uh, when they're diagnosed, then they really hear nothing beyond the diagnosis. Um, they may be told at the uh, physician level, you know, I'm going to send your prescription to this pharmacy and you're not walking out with the script, uh, but they don't necessarily hear that. So I think, you know, where specialty pharmacy uh, comes into play at the beginning of that patient journey within specialty is really educating the patient on what a specialty pharmacy is and the role that the specialty pharmacy will play in that patient's medication journey. So generally, um, prescriptions are received by specialty pharmacies today via fax, uh, a large majority, and although technology has evolved, it hasn't evolved for all stakeholders in the pathway. So the majority of the prescribing offices that we are working with still uh, heavily leverage fax. So a very, uh, very minor uh, minority of the prescriptions that we receive are electronic. Pharmacies receive that fax. Generally, uh, that triggers a benefit investigation, understanding what the patient, uh, what the patient's responsibility is, and then uh, getting the patient on the phone to talk with them. So that's really the first touch point. Specialty pharmacy with the patient is really uh, educating that patient on their therapy, what the um, patient's responsibility will be in taking that therapy, and and responsibility to let the pharmacy know if there are any challenges with that therapy. So. Uh, the patient uh, gets scheduled their first uh, delivery of the medication. Now specialty pharmacies generally deliver uh, their medication through um, uh, vendors who uh, support it through the mail. Uh, we do have a few patients who do walk into a couple of specialty pharmacies that are open door, but for the most part, these patients are receiving their therapy and then they subsequently receive follow-up phone calls from clinicians in specialty pharmacy to further reinforce the ed education around uh, prescription therapy and then are there to uh, assist in any issues that may come up, side effect management and such. Nick, can you talk about maybe some of that, that benefits investigation and how that's key in getting patients on therapy? Yeah, I think that's very important, uh, especially when, a, when a, a, you know, a patient hears a specialty medication and they ask, what's that? And, what, you know, why did it have to come to you versus, you know, um, my traditional way of, of filling a prescription? Um, and it's usually because of the, the benefit coverage of if the product is covered initially, what type of copay they're going to have, um, the challenges around their prior authorization, and, and what's needed. So that initial contact with the patient um, is, is, may or may not be news of, of b the prescription being filled. It may just be, this is, this is where the process is. We've submitted a prior authorization. Um, the payer will let us know within the next you know, 24 to 48 hours um, if it's approved or not. Um, and, and you know we talk about that process, but there's uh, many cases where sometimes that the uh, payer may deny the claim um, or the initial claim on the prior authorization, and then you have to do uh, what they call an appeal. And I think specialty pharmacy plays a really big role there in, in helping the provider um, make sure that they submit the proper information to the payer so that they can see a complete picture and make the correct decision of uh, whether the, the, the medication is covered or not. Yeah, yeah specialty pharmacy certainly plays a, a huge role in that benefits investigation. I think that's the, the real step where that's a differentiating step. They're making sure that they're navigating that payer coverage, finding coverage for that patient somewhere, uh, finding assistance, whether it's copay or foundational. Uh, so that's so important. And I think, I think the next thing that specialty does so well, not only managing that patient from a clinical perspective, but ensuring that patient's contacted for each subsequent refill in a timely manner and, and ensuring that if there are issues, they're following up with the physician and with the patient to determine, you know, why have you stopped your therapy? Are you experiencing many side effects? And I think 
Uh, that's some of the benefits that, that, that specialty does. Uh, Nick, are there key performance metrics captured by specialty to ensure that those patients are receiving good, good service? Yeah, I, I think um, in your clinical management program that a specialty pharmacy puts together, there's the uh, touch points uh, around your assessments. So um, you're, you're calling the patient not only to uh, schedule the next refill, but you're calling them to make sure that the journey and the experience that they're having um, is a positive one. You know, uh, did they experience a side effect? Uh, you know, what can you do proactively to uh, prevent that side effect? And then I think you know the end result is proven in uh, first fill uh, persistencies and, and your rates on that, and as well as your NPR rates. Um, you know, specialty pharmacy has a higher success um, on a patient uh, finishing therapy or, or staying on therapy, and it's because of those touch points. And I would just add as well that one of the really keys to any good clinical therapy management is getting the patient involved and engaged. Um, and a couple of ways to do that are through um, not only goal setting, specific goal setting with the patient so that they feel um, you know, that they, they have a stake in how their therapy goes as well, uh, but then also engaging patient reported outcomes throughout therapy. So you can set the expectation up front what the goal is, um, and then periodically check in with the patient um, towards those specific goals of therapy, and really creating that engaged patient, um, which generally leads to better outcomes. Yeah, clinical outcomes are so important. I, I know that uh, when you look at specialty pharmacy and you look at what they're measured against, a couple things, Nick, I think you touched on was really that conversion rate. It's real important that, you know, if a, if a physician or a manufacturer or your contracted managed care plan is sending you 100 patients, that you're converting them into an actual fill. And that's not always easy because of everything that you've outlined. I think turnaround time, Cheryl, to, to your point, it's so important a lot of these patients have cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's important that the specialty pharmacies are navigating the benefit and the assistance of the patient to get that script turned around in a timely manner to start therapy and then ultimately persistence. I mean, if, if that patient's supposed to be on therapy for three months, six months, or 12 months, what is the specialty pharmacy doing to differentiate their service to ensure that patient has, they can't have a good outcome unless they're, unless they're continuing their therapy on an, an appropriate way. And then I think what pharma's also looking for, and we touched on earlier, is that timely and accurate data. They're contracting with a specialty network uh, and part of that contract is for you to provide that data back that's accurate and timely. So uh, all of those metrics are really important in, in measuring uh, what a specialty pharmacy does and, and provide good customer service and then followed up most importantly by what is the ultimate outcome uh, based upon all those activities. Um,